First meeting to order of the Champaign County Board, Committee of the Whole for Elect Highway and Justice Areas, Tuesday, October 2nd, 2011. The time is 6.06. Roll call, please. Alex? Here. Ammons? Here. Anderson? Here. Benzel? Berkson? Here. Betts? Here. Carter? Coert? Esri? Here. Holderfield? Here. James? Here. Jay? Here. Jones? Here. Kurtz? Here. Langenheim? Here. McGinty? Here. Michaels? Here. Mosier? Here. Nudo? Here. O'Connor? Here. Petrie? Here. Quisenberry? Richards? Here. Rosales? Schrader? Yes. Weibel? Here. We have a quorum. Uh, Mr. Benzel, uh, Mr. Benzel, and Mr. Quisenberry have informed me they will not be at this meeting. Um, seek approval of the minutes for Committee of the Whole, June 7, 2011. So moved. Moved by Mr. Second. James. Second by Mr. Esri. Discussion. Seeing none, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Seek approval of the agenda and any addenda. Moved by Mr. Butts, second by Mr. Langham. Uh, discussion. Uh, let's remove item 8C, which is the presentation by early Head Start, early Head Start. That will not happen tonight. Under, just under justice. Yes, page two under justice. Any other changes? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Public participation. Is there any public participation tonight? Seeing none, we go on to communications. Any communications from the board? Running that category. Let's go to highway and transportation. Um, Ms. Cord is not here, so Mr. J, I believe you're in charge. Can I come here? <laughs> Uh, I think, Mr. Bell, are you suffering? You don't want to move uh, because of your hip? No, I couldn't get up. I was just trying to make it easy. <laughs> I didn't want them all to have to look at me. <laughs> no. Oh, please. It's a novelty to have you up. Oh, all right. Go ahead and move the ER over to the place. James Wright, no seats. Okay, thanks. Good evening, everyone. The first item on the agenda for the highway is the monthly reports. I would entertain a motion to accept those and put them on file. So moved. Mrs. Ammons, seconded by Mr. James. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed, ayes have it. Uh, County Engineer's Report. Item uh, B1, um, as you know, we got a salt storage facility uh, here on uh, the Brookings campus, which was constructed in 1994. It's a uh, joint facility between the county, the city of Urbana, and Urbana Township. There was a uh, st salt storage facility agreement that was drafted at the time of construction, which is in the back of your packet, shown as Exhibit A. You'll see that... Um, <coughs> The uh, split in cost between the county, Urbana, and the road district there, 57.1 county, 28.6 city of Urbana, 14.3% Urbana Township. Um, the roof on the salt dome um, has seen better days. Uh, it's getting very old. We have a uh, RFP out right now that is due to be uh, opened on August the 8th um, to get a contractor to re-roof the salt dome. This is an intergovernmental agreement which basically spells out uh, who's going to pay for what in the re-roofing. We use the exact same percentages as were used in the agreement back in 1994. Uh, the only caveat to this agreement is that the city of Urbana didn't budget for this in the 2012 budget. Um, so the invoices and payments there, number three, um, the county is going to be responsible for the project and invoice the city and the township for their share of the project costs. 
and the township will pay the invoices within 30 days. They say they do have the money to pay for their portion, portion and the city shall pay their share of the cost no later than July 15th of 2012, which is right in the beginning of their next budget cycle. Um, it's about roughly, I didn't put an estimate in here because I didn't really want contractors to know what the estimate was, but it's about $87,000 to re-roof that thing based on... Uh, based on Mr. Reinhardt's, uh, he got some numbers last year to do some budgeting by. Um, we can use motor fuel tax money in order to pay for our portion of the re-roofing because it is, you know, road salt and it's a facility where we store salt to maintain the roads. So we will be paying for our portion out of motor fuel tax funds. We'll be fronting the city of Urbana's portion um, out of the county highway fund and they will be paying us back, like it says, before July. 15th of 2012. So this is just an intergovernmental agreement spelling all that out. Mr. Rival. I move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second, Mr. Rosales. Any discussion? Mr. Weibel? Um there will be a resolution at the board giving you the authorization to sign the agreement. That isn't here today. Uh, but. Two, two questions. One, what were the original percentages based on? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I think they were based on how much salt each entity planned on using. Basically, Urbana orders salt, we order salt, so, so and annually. the township orders salt. It's all hauled in there, and then as they take it out, we keep track of it each year. So everybody pays for their own salt. It's just a matter of you know, how much salt each entity would use coming out of that facility. Uh, the other question is, we have two salt buildings. I'm going to clarify. This is the <laughs> this new is the salt one. dome, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the other one is just used uh, uh, to store the inloader in during the winter months so that we can, you know, scoop the salt out of the dome. Mr. Betts? How much well, the original entire salt storage facility was $242,000. That was in 1994. Um, I don't know how much the roof portion of it costs. Pretty, pretty much all roof, right? Uh, yeah, it's it's a base with, as you can, the base goes up about six or eight feet, and then it's it's all roof. Um, and it's just a regular shingled roof, but, you know, it's not like you can get up there and walk around on it and re-shingle it. It's, uh, you know, it's going to be work that is a little bit difficult for a contractor to do. Ms. Salmons? I just wanted to um, figure out if if we kept the same percentages, does the city of Urbana and the townships use the exact same amount of salt each year? No. I mean, it's... Uh, those percentages were put in there in the agreement in 1994, um, and it says right in the agreement that those shall be the percentages from there on out. If any entity wants to get out of it, then they can get out, and the salt dome will remain the property of the county. So if they decided we're not really using it, we don't want to do it anymore, we just want out, they can get out, and their portion gets reapportioned to the other ones based on their percentages. If, if I can just Mr. follow up with you, Mr. Can I I'm follow? sorry, just, go ahead. Just the yes. same question. I'm just trying to understand if have we checked to see the difference in the salt usage meaning that might apply to some amendment to this contract no I haven't years. looked at how much meaning if I, increase is going on yeah obviously we have 250 miles of roads the township has 50 I don't even he doesn't salt all of them obviously the city doesn't have that many I mean we I think if it got reapportioned percentage wise we use a greater portion of salt out of there than the other entity so I think it might hurt us to relook at that. Mr. Nuno. I was going to pursue the same lines that uh, Pius and Carol were doing, but I guess um, I, I just don't know if you have the weather is going to be similar anytime we have a need for salt because of the right. proximity of the location and either it should be based on uh, road you know mileage uh, or or some other fixed you know way of, of figuring out who uses what now maybe it's to our advantage or disadvantage but it's this reminds me of the ordinance we were looking at last week or last month about a 99 ordinance on uh, tourist money I mean things have changed and and I guess maybe we got to have a relook at this not that we're you know, trying to take advantage or disadvantage to it, but come up to current standards. Uh, I think maybe at this, it's a good time to do this. Is have you relook at it and, and take a look at the, either some basis for mileage or, or road miles or some other basis so that it's fair at this time of uh, 
Well, the only good basis would be, would be how much salt you're actually putting in the shed and how much you're taking out. Because, it, depend, I mean, if you have 5,000 miles of road and you don't sell them all, you can't really, you know, it, it, the only good basis I could see, and I'm, I feel that this uh, agreement was written by, was, okay, the county's going to put 6,000 tons in there and the city's going to put 2,000 and the township's going to put 500 or whatever, whatever the numbers are, because it's salt in, salt out, um, you know, that's, I mean, there's, there's no wear and tear on the building, basically. It's just weather that's, you know, that's putting wear and tear on the building. But um, based on the tons of salt that go in and out of the building, I would believe would be the only fair way to, you know, if you wanted to reapportion the percentages from the agreement that was originally made. Mr. Kurtz? Yeah. Um, do you measure how much salt comes out? Oh, yeah. Right. Yep. Okay, so you know exactly the percentages. Do yep. they break down similar to this, these numbers? I would believe they would. I couldn't tell you for sure. We have that. You know, we have those statistics in our office. But, you know, our loader is used to load all the salt. It's based on, you know, X number of yards of, of salt and its weight, how many tons there is in a loader bucket full. We don't weigh every truck that goes in and out of there. It's based on how many truckloads go in and out and how many loader full buckets they put into the truck. Have, uh, have any of the entities approved this agreement? Um, the city of Urbana, it hasn't been before their council, but Bill Gray says there's no issue with it. And the uh, township highway commissioner said he'll sign it as soon as the county does. Ms. Michaels, I'm, I'm, just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's Go ahead. okay. It's okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, it's just, I, I'm sure the county has more more road and more use than the township, most likely. But 57% is a pretty high number. Mm -hmm. um, is there any way to guess those numbers, the actual usage, so that we might be able to maybe uh, recalculate the percentages? If it's if it's if you're going to recalculate the percentages, you're going to have to redo the agreement, which is going to have to go through you guys, the city of Urbana, and then the bids are going to get kind of held up, waiting for all that to happen, and we may not get the roof on it this year. That's the only thing that worries me. That's all. Okay. Um, and we own the building. Yeah. Well, so if, there's. If we're talking maybe ten thousand dollars difference. Uh, you know, that's ten thousand dollars or twenty thousand. I don't know how much money we would might be saving by knowing the percentages that might be higher for the city of Urbana and the township. Well, well, I know that's true, but at least we don't, we don't know. Right. I, I, you know, I hate to just pass a, a, a an agreement that. Is well, the agreement's already been approved and passed. So if you're going to do another, if you're going to do another agreement to base the intergovernmental agreement on, we're going to have to go back through that again and repass an agreement in on, just, some just, month ahead. Is there any way to just communicate to us what those numbers are? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I can send them to Deb or whoever, and she can forward them to you. Know, you know how close we are. Yep. Percentage wise. Okay. No problem. Thanks, Tom. This is Michaels. Um, one of the things I think that we need to take side of is also that not only just storing the salt, but this probably is also part of a rental or a storage fee because if they had to get their own facility, that would cost them something to store it. Um, and if I did my math right of the approximate 87, um, our portion is 49.6 and theirs is 37.3. Yeah. So I, I think that's why the percentages may be the way they are. Mr. James. Well, I'm looking at that item number three about the invoices and payments, and you're giving them till July 12th, 2012. I was thinking in most contracts I ever deal with, and I know when we go out for anything, we always have some type of interest fee, but if they don't pay on that date, what penalty is given to them? Well, it says in number four that if the city or township failed to take the actions necessary and accomplish their respective obligations based on this agreement, then paragraph 13 of Exhibit A shall govern in the relationship with respect to the salt dumps shall be terminated between the county and the failing entity. So if they don't pay, they're out of the salt dome business with us. Right. But I guess my, and I read that in 13, but my question would be, so they use it for a year and then all of a sudden they say, well, you know, we really don't want to be in there next year. We got something else. And so now they've used it a year. We got absolutely nothing out of it. I mean, most contracts, that's one thing I ask about in other contracts, mm -hmm. is we're here to protect the county's interests and we're right. not. And I think there ought to be some sort of 
fine or fee levy or something because they could renege and we absolutely got no right to that money according to our number 13 in there. So I think that needs to be looked at. I think I'm sure they'll pay, but there ought to be some wording there to make them pay. Mr. Langenheim. Yeah. Uh, have I got this right? We buy all the salt and then we no. Each entity buys their own salt and has it hauled directly to the facility. So the salt is bought by different people and dumped in that thing? That's correct. Okay, how do you account for how much salt is taken out by each group? We account by each load or bucket full that goes into the trucks and... You weigh each load? No, no, no. It's so many tons per load or bucket full. We don't have a scale. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's an average of how much is in a load or bucket full. Alex, with respect to my colleagues who want to get the, the details on the numbers right, uh, I think we need, can't lose sight of the fact that this is an intergovernmental agreement that seems to be working. It's a way for three governments to not have to have roofs replaced on our individual buildings, and I am fully supportive of things like that, including this. Mrs. Petrie? Uh, yes, I have a question about the cost for the roofing and if other than shingles are considered for this roofing uh, a material that would last much longer than shingles will. Uh, Mr. Reinhardt is the one that put together the bid document. It wasn't through the highway department. So you'd have to ask him exactly. I'm not a roof guy. I'm a road guy. So is Mr. Reinhardt here? No, he's in the next cow meeting in a week. He's not on the agenda tonight. Well, somehow I'd like to have that answer because um, this was done in 94. That life of that roof has right. been very short. There are other materials that will last much longer, even though they might cost a little bit more initially. When you cost it out, it will be a much less cost per year. And I think that we need to focus on finding that out. Okay. Mrs. Berkson. The extra, money, the extra money is going to cost when their connection to the dome is terminated is but is enough guarantee that they'll pay because it's going to cost them a lot of money if they have to have another facility for their salt. Well, and Dave DeThorn looked at this and he's the reason why number four was worded that way where we said that the, the agreement, you know, the relationship would be terminated between the county and the failing entity. I mean, to build one of these things nowadays is probably $400,000. I don't think anybody wants to make that kind of investment because they couldn't pay a $25,000 bill to have a roof redone. But Mr. Weibel. Never mind. Okay, I don't mind. Anybody else? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passed. Uh, okay, number, number, I'm not, excuse me, I'm sorry. I just want to point out that Ms. Cord is here and she's actually chair, so perhaps if she wants to step up or you'd like, like to step Mr. up and finish this, ma'am. Okay. I will get you those answers. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, number two, we have uh, we have two bridges on the Township Bridge Program, one in Hensley Township and one, uh, or actually both of them in Hensley Township, that are going to be bid on August the 11th. And this is basically for information purposes. Therefore, we couldn't bring them uh, to this August the 2nd Committee of the Whole Meeting. So those bids will be on the County Board agenda for August the 18th so that we can approve those. Any other business? Madam Chair, do you have anything to report? No, I don't. Uh, on the agenda, just number one. Yeah. That concludes highway. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh yeah, what happened to this question? I don't know if they didn't answer it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good evening everyone.
Uh, as Pius said earlier, we will not be having our Head Start presentation tonight. Uh, they had to schedule their collective bargaining uh, session for tonight. They're trying to get through that, so Kathleen Lippick uh, was unable to be here. So that will be pushed back to, to next month, and we will also be going over some of the quarterly reports next month as well. <coughs> so the first item on our agenda is the requ request for approval for the application for an award of acceptance of the annual emergency management grant. We have uh, Deputy Director of our EMA, John Dwyer, here tonight who can speak to that. Is, can I get a, a motion? Second. Motion from Betts, second by Rosales. Uh, Mr. Dwyer, can you walk us uh, through this? Yes. Good evening. Um, this application is just a uh, annual requirement for us to get uh, a grant to offset our costs. Um, it's funded through the federal government, through the state, and down to us. Um, it's hard to say how much we're going to get right now. Uh, it's been in the neighborhood of nearly $40,000 uh, over the last few years. Uh, this year we're still waiting with the budget stuff that's been going on at the federal level to find out what we're going to get at the local level. So, But it doesn't cost us anything. It's just we have some requirements we have to meet through exercises and through training in order to qualify for the grant. It's uh, within our scope of work. So um, we're just asking that we can apply for it and receive the funds. Are there any questions uh, on this item or for Mr. Dwyer, Ms. Holderfield? Um, what type of exercises and training do you need to certify for? Uh, uh, like tabletops or functional exercises with other jurisdictions. Um, in our yearly uh, application, we put in to do uh, an exercise with uh, Illinois American Water on a haz hazardous material spill in Urbana. Um, also doing some severe weather training. Uh, so uh, maybe an exercise every quarter. It just depends what the scope and what uh, other entities have as far as grant requirements uh, where we can work together. So threats that or hazards that are a part of uh, or a threat to Champaign County that will exercise, whether it be infectious disease, hazardous material, severe weather, um, and things like that. So does that kind of answer your question? Yeah, and just to follow up, and when have you scheduled these training sessions for, and when do you anticipate you'll be completed? Uh, right now we're looking at the Illinois American Water Exercise sometime in the fall, uh, and severe weather will probably be before the severe weather season hits. And then in the spring to summer, we don't know yet with the state's exercise schedule, but normally the state has a three-year cycle where they exercise one-third of the state every year, and our third is being exercised next year we don't know what type of exercise it's going to be. Last year it was flooding in the southern area but of course they had actual flooding so they didn't do as much or they had ex or they had an earthquake but they had the flooding so they didn't get to do as much as they wanted. We're not sure what it's going to be in our area. It's hard to say. Thank but, you. Yes, Ms. Ammons. That's a question from our knowledge. Um, who do you train and in, in if you had these trainings could members come or? <coughs> sure. Uh, some of it's for local EMA liaisons whether it's from the city of Urbana, city of Champaign, um, myself, uh, Bill Keller, um, as well as our volunteers such as weather spotters um, so and, and other volunteers. So that's the kind of training we have to do. We have to, some of the stuff we have to report into a federal database system. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Petrie. Oh, uh, well, uh, there's a um, memo to Mr. Richards states the 40000 that you mentioned, but over in the application, you have 50000 So is that wishful thinking, or do you think that's a possibility? <laughs> that's wishful thinking, but we have to put it in. So that's the way it equates. So we don't know. But also with that, it's, we don't know, there's something else to add to that, is that the city of Champaign has done away with their EMA as of this year. They are no longer certified, so we will get credit for the population of the city of Champaign. It's hard to judge how much funding we will get because of that, because the EMA grants are based on population. So that's where it could be 
50, but normally it's the last few years it's been 40, but that was because the city of Champaign has their own certified EMA, but this coming year they will not. Uh, but that probably would have been helpful information in this memo to Mr. Richards. Okay. Mr. Jay? I'd just like to give them a little plug. I've had the opportunity because of my occupation to work with these folks uh, on several occasions. Uh, actually, it's a small department here in the county that most of us don't realize that don't have contact with them, how important and how much they actually do do. They actually support all of us out in the rural areas, uh, all the fire districts and the small villages and, and towns, uh, not only when disasters come, but in preparing for disasters. So they actually do do a lot, and they do a lot of training. And Mrs. Amons, I'm one of them. They train not well, but he tried. But uh, they do do a good job for the county. We appreciate your efforts. Thank you. Any other questions on this motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, motion passes. Okay. Uh, we also have the monthly reports because there was no justice and social service meeting last month. We have two for each agency. Uh, we also have the April for the public defender. Uh, let me go through these quickly. We've had several months where the public defender has been able to close more cases than they opened, which of course isn't dependent on them. It's dependent on the court system. In April, March and April, March, uh, 654 cases were opened, 627 were closed. So that cycle's uh, been reversing. 214 of those 654 were, were felonies. We have 130 misdemeanors, 279 traffic, 18 juvenile delinquency, 18 abuse and neglect, and two miscellaneous. And the, the numbers for April are 179 of those 595 that were opened were felonies, 93 misdemeanors. 286 traffic, 23 juvenile delinquencies, 3 mental health, 11 in the abuse and neglect category, and 0 miscellaneous for, for April. Uh, we have the emergency management agency report for June and July. In, and if anybody has any questions on this one, I'm sure uh, Mr. Dwyer would be happy to fill in on that also. But the, like you said, they've been doing a lot of exercises, which is a lot of what they do, be it occasionally federal, but usually with IEMA or their own exercises on various threats. And in June, the EMA participated and hosted uh, with the Champaign Urbana Public Health District's community partner functional exercise dealing with infectional disease outbreak. Uh, EMA met with community partners, the public health district, which is more involved than you would think in, in things like this because of infectious disease uh, and bioterrorism exercises. The Red Cross, Pace, Carl, Urbana Fire Department, and Amber Glenn about functional needs, formerly special needs registry for county residents in the case of emergency that they're still looking at setting up, which Mr. Keller talked about when he was here in July. That, if anybody was at the parade, they might have seen the county's mobile command post at the Champaign-Urbana July 4th parade. And EMA also attended the 2011 Champaign County Preparedness Summit at the I Hotel. Did, uh, did some outreach about cooling center locations and had their had a meeting with the Champaign County Medical Reserve Corps to familiarize volunteers with the emergency management uh, and, and, re and response. Animal control in in, in uh, May and June. May uh, revenue from registrations, fees, and kennel services was twenty thousand fifty-five dollars. Uh, June revenue from registrations, fees, fines, and kennel services was twenty-five thousand three dollars, and most of that increase was from registrations, although there was there were more fees uh, in June 2011 as well. Uh, in May, there were 106 dogs, 74 cats impounded, 35 dogs and 5 cats were returned to their owners, 49 dogs and 27 cats were euthanized, and there were 15 low-cost spay and neuters. Uh, in June, 
108 dogs and 129 cats were impounded. 44 dogs and two cats were returned to their owners. 49 dogs and 67 cats were euthanized, and there were 24 low-cost spay and neuters for dogs and cats, almost all for, for both months for dogs. Uh, with Head Start, Head Start had had to lay off, I believe, 10 of their pre-K teachers. However, uh, in July, we got some good news. Uh, Head Start got 100% of funding from the Illinois State Board of Education, so they were able to recall their laid-off staff. Uh, and they're also able to schedule year-round employees for a 52-week this program year. Uh, they had start still working on addressing its non-compliance identified by its federal review for Region 5 with the federal government. And also in the June report, uh, they're doing a change for the program's exclusion policy involving uh, head lice. There no longer will children be allowed to return to school with lice nets. Previously, the policy had been that after the child started using anti-lice shampoo and could demonstrate that, they would be allowed to start going back. Uh, is there a motion to accept these reports and place them on file? Moved by Butts, seconded by Kurtz. Are there any questions, especially for Mr. For Dwyer, on any of these reports? I will be, just like last month, passing these reports around if anybody wants to look at them more closely. Are there any questions on the motion? Uh, okay, Mr. O'Connor. Thank you, Mike. I was just wondering, the uh, Animal control reports said what they brought in. Do they list their expenses along with that so we can tell how much they lost? Well, what they list that they bring in is only uh, for registrations, fees, and kennel services. Uh, they also do list payments received from municipalities, which it was 31,499 in, in May, 30 and 31,197 in June. Uh, we they don't have their their full budget every month, so I cannot tell you how much they lost or uh, uh, brought in extra for for May and June. But we got the budget coming up soon. We can talk about that. Uh, Ms. Michaels. Just a quick question. As you're reading those, is there any way for us to just go ahead and have them at our desk in advance and then we can go ahead and read them over? Or is that something yeah. we get last minute? Well, I know they're online. They're online. We, if it's the, uh, if it's the will of the body, we can certainly have, uh, there will be some printing costs, but we could certainly have these printed out and have them at everybody's desks beforehand if it's the will of the body. Mr. Chair? I think we used to do this in the past, but the, um, the sense was that people were not reading them and therefore just throw them away and it turned out to be, we thought, a waste of paper. Sure. Sure. Let me get my phone. Well, I mean, do you... It's fine. We could do in between, and for people who are interested, we could have... Uh, several of the documents there, not 27, but maybe have them sitting over there where people come in if they're interested. I just thought you got some little updates is what you were reading mostly versus what we already had seen on the online system. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, these, okay. no, these are from the online reports to make sure everybody's Thank familiar you. with that. Uh, was Mrs. Anderson? Did you have well, a I was just going to comment that my first few years on the board, everybody got a copy and I was chair of justice a number of years when we did get them, and even members of that committee uh, didn't feel that they needed in, to save paper, and I think that was not just the justice committee, but I think the full board and looking at strategies, ways to save funds, was that as they went online, and we were encouraged to make sure they got online, that people could read them there. So I would encourage people if they're interested to do that. Are there any other questions on the motion to accept these reports and put them on file or any other question on the reports? 
All in favor of accepting these reports and putting them on file, say aye. Aye. All opposed, say aye. Motion passes. Aye. Uh, there is no Head Start update. Uh, is there any other business? Chair has no report other than to say once again, I'll pass these reports around if anybody has not seen them and wants to look at them more closely. And uh, we do have uh, Section 8, uh, Justice A1 passed unanimously, so it can go on consent the request for approval for the application for the EMA grant. Uh, okay, thank you. Hi, good evening. All right, let's move on to the ELOC agenda. Uh, number 9A is a recreation and entertainment license. Uh, Crazy X Car K NFP for charity race location in the Champaign County Fairgrounds, August 27th, 2011. Ms. Kawat moves. Second? Second. Second by Mr. James. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, monthly report. Really don't have. Oh, uh, yeah. The monthly reports are on your desk. Uh, there are two for July, June, and July. Are there any questions, uh, comments, discussion on the reports? Uh, Mr. Nudo. John, uh, out of curiosity, I've asked a question before. How do permits uh, stack up versus previous years? I mean, we were talking about the amount has dropped drastically because of the economic environment. What's it like now? Um, let's see. You've got month and year to date, but there's no comparisons to last year. you got a five-year average. For, uh, yeah, we were... Month by month, we're comparing pretty favorably with 2010. Um, I believe that we might be just slightly lower than 2010, but we're pretty comparable um, for 2010 as a total. And that, in previous years, 2010 was a... Oh, 2010 was low. Okay. And the second question I have, as always, is on the number of complaints that we're still sitting with. How old are some of these? Well, in fact, there's a small group that uh, goes back to pre-2000. Um, that's less than 100. The others are all uh, probably post-2000. And in fact, may not even exist. Well, I'm sure somebody's dead or somebody's moved on or... Well, the complaint is actually on the property. Yeah, well. And whether, regardless of who owns the property, is the, if that condition is still there, it's still a valid complaint. Do you have any goal setting uh, ways of trying to get these numbers down over the, over the years? Uh, I, we don't see any progress. And this is the face of, of your department. I guess voting constituents, people who live in the county, would probably look at this and say, this isn't so great. Well, in fact, we are uh, resolving more complaints than we get. We've done that since 2008. Um, the only way to increase that from what it is right now is to put more resources into it. And um, our resources are stretched thin right now. So if, if we went from 553 in fiscal year 2010 to 539, that's 14 cases reduction. Overall, that's a resolution of, um, I think, approximately 100 cases. Um, 119 cases were resolved in FY 2010. I don't know if you recall the little report that I gave you back in um, January 2010. And uh, I believe the results of that report indicated that that number compared favorably with similar counties. Well, personally, I'm not satisfied, and I think there needs to be some mechanism to get greater emphasis on this, because why would people file complaints if, if they know they're not going to be handled in a prompt manner? I, I guess 
if permits are down or uh, over the last, I know the last time we talked they were down over 50% during the banner years of economic growth and maybe your resources are down and you must be talking about manpower. I think that's probably your your uh, your terminology for uh, for what you have to do. But if, if permits are down, that means that there's manpower to do other things. And, and I, for one, want to see some improvement. And I want to see it, you know, with some goal setting and some act action on your part. And um, to see these kinds of reports come in month after month, to me, is not satisfactory. Uh, for we, we, do a lot, we do a lot on planning, but if we plan and, and put code into force, if we don't enforce it, I see no need for planning. Uh, for the last year, we've been without an associate planner, and so um, we've been stretched that way. Um, we're currently recruiting a new associate planner, and once that associate planner gets on board, uh, we'll be back up to our full resource level. Um, if you have suggestions on goal setting, I would I would gladly entertain any suggestion. Our goal setting is generally done during the budget, and I've I've talked to you about this. I always establish a goal higher than what I think can be done, although not greatly higher, because I feel that just squelches enthusiasm and morale. But I do ask people to stretch. Um, but we'll continue to work on that. Well, I have no intentions of micromanaging, but this board has the ability to set standards and, and put uh, uh, their judgment on the work being done here. So I would just urge all my fellow board members to, to look at this and see if that's satisfactory to all of you. And remember that these are people who have faith in our county government to get things done for for them when they call in to register a complaint. And uh, uh, the backlog is just uh, is just demoralizing to me, Mr. James. Well, following up a little bit on that, I I would suggest, if I may, that you know with this backlog, maybe you have a staff person or yourself look at some of the older cases and and somehow get them off of there because let's face it, you know they, they got to be non-pending and you're carrying them forward so to place that number, and then I I think John I would look at you know with. I don't know how your office operates, but I know like if I get a call on something, if I don't respond over 30 days, I feel like, oh my land, what are we doing wrong? And we should at least touch base with the person that has called us. Uh, maybe you need to dedicate a staff person a day a week or half a day a week that says, okay, here's these cases. Let's prioritize them and let's see where we're at with them. But if I call, you know, and, and I have a complaint with my neighbor's yard or junk vehicles or something, and it goes on for two years, I'm thinking, okay, now wait a minute. You know, I'm doing the right thing on my part, but yet if I don't do what I, is expected of me as far as paying my taxes or doing what I need to do, then I can be fine. So I think we need to really look at that. And I know you've been carrying those numbers for some time, and, and I would hope that based on what I've seen of your office and, and some of the zoning tools that you have and ordinance rules, that we can do a better job. And I know that sometimes a court system, because I've been involved when we had some junk vehicles out there at Cherry Orchard, but if we're not doing our job like Al said, then why even have it? Why are we allowing people? Because I know I, I would be very frustrated if my case lingered that long without getting a courtesy call back. And like I said, get someone to look. How long is it going to take? Two days to go back and look at some of them and say, you know, this case is, you know, we never did anything. Let's just throw it out of the system. And I think you ought to set a deadline on some of these calls that if, if they're not responded to within six months to a year, that they're absolutely just taken off. I mean, you shouldn't carry them that long. I mean, that's, that's sad. That really is. I, um, I should clarify that I believe all the recent complaints are in fact responded to within that time frame. Uh, and as I, I've said before, I believe uh, the level of activity is what we can expect from our level of resources. I would be happy to make a proposal to add staffing to improve um, our performance if, if the board is that, if it's that much of a priority. Pastor. 
I had a valid complaint. Microphone. I'm sorry. Mr. James, are you finished? Yeah, I just wanted, I couldn't hear. Oh, okay. Microphone, okay. If I had a valid complaint, even if you didn't get to it very quickly, I think I'd be very upset if you just said, well, we didn't get to it, so we throw it out. Five years later? Yeah. All right. Any other discussion? Ms. Petrie. I have two questions. One, you mentioned that it's a lack of having a full staff that's aggravated this backlog a bit. Are there other variables that is aggravating the backlog? Well, I want to be clear. Our performance regarding enforcement this year is similar to last year and the year before, and it's similar to other counties, so I believe that in enforcement we've done well. Now, we had hoped to do better this year because, you recall, we've worked our backlog of zoning inspections down, and we are hoping to shift from concentrating on zoning inspections to concentrating on enforcement inspections. The lack of an associate planner hurt that. One employee was out six weeks with an unplanned surgery. That had a big impact, in fact, on both areas. So, and then, of course, in the past month, everything has been dominated by the wind farm case. But as things get back to a normal staffing, normal workload, I do hope that we can shift some resources into enforcement. But I have no expectation that the amount of resources we can shift is going to double the number of cases we get done next year. I don't think we have that many, you know, extra resources to work with at this point. We'll certainly try, but we had hoped to have a significant impact on it this year, but I never once thought we would double the number of cases that we could resolve. Okay, my second question is, we do have a Department of Urban and Regional Planning at the university. How often does the Planning and Zoning Department of the county take advantage of those students as interns who could be doing some of this work? If those interns would be happy working on enforcement cases, that would be a great resource. Then I would strongly urge that opportunity to be explored. Ms. Michaels. Just a quick question. I know that some cases take more than others, but do you kind of have an average of how long it takes for each case, or is it just like it could be an hour, it could be three days? I mean, I don't... Is it that varied, depending on what it is? Okay. Because I know that looking in July, there were 10 cases completed. But my question back to the older items, and maybe, you know, a little bit of a solution, is, is there such a thing as maybe sending a letter to some of these people and saying, hey, reviewing our records, we would still have this outstanding. Are you still interested in, you know, I don't know, pursuing this file? Or is this something that has been settled? You know, just we haven't forgotten you. I mean, I don't know if maybe that's a way to approach it. It could be opening another can of worms, but... Well, frankly, I think a better... Well, we could do that. However, in the same amount of time, which we don't have or we would have done it already, but in the same amount of time, we could do a drive-by just to see, does this complaint still seem to be there? And then if it is, we would follow up on it. But again, we don't have time to do that for this backlog. We're trying to keep up with the current complaints and the more critical complaints. We prioritize complaints. And so the ones that are hanging out there are lower priority. We get our... Well, I was thinking maybe there was like a database that said this person, this complaint, this address, hey, and a generic letter to them. That's what I was thinking. Nothing that would take a lot of time. I just didn't know. I can't stress this enough. Sure. With our permitting, zoning cases, enforcement, and working on plan items, it's a full work year. In fact, this year is more than a full work year. I appreciate that. Mr. Jay first, then Ms. Holyfield. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This 
I think there's a lot more serious underlying problem here than, uh, than we're talking about cases not getting done. Uh, we're on the verge of implementing a new LMRP program when in fact we can't actually handle what we've got right now and I really think seriously and I don't mean this belligerently I mean honestly that we need to slow down and maybe postpone or at least uh, uh, at the very least slow down the implementation until we can get a better handle on what's going on in the zoning office and, and, and whether it's manpower or time or whatever it takes we just need to slow down and be sure what we're doing we're, we're doing right and, and keep in mind that we work for the people of the county. Thank you. Ms. Holderfield. John, do you have any way of determining how much time you're spending on actual planning and how much time you're spending on enforcement? Um, and how do you interpret uh, the enforcement of the current uh, rules and regulations that we have uh, already implemented? I mean, are you, are you interpreting uh, the ordinances that are currently on the books? Um, how do you do that? I guess that's what some of the frustration that I keep hearing is that, you know, if we're planning, we're planning. If we're enforcing zoning, we're supposed to be enforcing zoning. So maybe my question should be, um, what's your time ratio spent on planning and zoning? Um, well, our timesheets have, uh, our paper timesheets have um, uh, work units that we've used for um, 20 years now to track time. Uh, in, a, in a gross sense, uh, in our office we have uh, an associate planner. Uh, historically, the associate planner works only on zoning cases. Uh, of course, that's provided if there's enough zoning cases. I had hoped this year to have the associate planner help on enforcement, but then we were without an associate planner. We'll get a new one on staff, and if the caseload stays at the level it was this year and last, uh, I have every intention of making sure that we don't put all of that into current planning. I know for a fact there's some of that that can be shifted towards enforcement. Um, on the uh, enforcement, the zoning officer now works only on enforcement. Uh, only works on permits uh, when we have a uh, difficult permit and we need that level of expertise. Otherwise, the zoning technicians do more than they've ever done. They do inspections. They're, they're even writing letters now um, uh, related to permitting uh, and some level of enforcement. So in terms of how our workload is distributed, it's really very simple. Um, and then on uh, the timesheets, I do keep track of how much time is spent on enforcement as a function of the zoning officer's time because um, there is a tendency to answer any question that comes up rather than focus on complaints. Um, so we have a good way of, I mean, a relatively good way of tracking time, and I do try to track it that way. But can you cite percentage just kind of a ballpark it? For what? Planning versus actual zoning ordinances and enforcement. You have a percentage, uh, just an idea of how much time is spent on planning and a percentage of how much time is spent on enforcement of zoning. And, and, and let me tell you, one of the frustrations that I have with one of the residents in my community is it's been a two-year long process for them and there's still not a resolve. So I guess I'd like to at least tell my constituent, well, this is how much time they're spending on zoning and enforcement and cleaning up these issues and this is how much percentage of the time that they're spending on planning. So can you give us a ballpark on how much of a percentage you're spending on planning and how much you're spending on zoning? Well, uh, we currently have five positions in our office. One position is the associate planner. Historically, that position, 20% of our staff is completely for current planning which is to say zoning cases and subdivision reviews. One position, the zoning officer, is strictly enforcement. 20% is enforcement. 
Now that person invariably gets uh, some level of time spent on inquiries because if we're low on staff, they answer a phone call, they answer that inquiry. We keep track of that. We have two zoning technicians. They're responsible for doing zoning board of appeals minutes, handling permitting, assisting with zoning cases, and even enforcement when necessary. And so 40% of our staffing, that's the 40% that really gets used wherever it's needed. Uh, I'm 20% of the staff. Um, I would say more than half my time is current planning to make sure things are going properly at the public hearings. Um, probably a quarter of my time is spent in permitting, depending on the types of permits that we have at any one time. Um, I would say a quarter of my time is spent working with the zoning officer on enforcement. And I could give you a report in the future that sort of shows that in a form that's easier to understand. but. Uh, more than 20% is on enforcement. More than 20% is on current planning. I'm talking overall now. Um, and 40%, um, well, more than 40% is on permitting uh, zoning boards of appeals minutes, which actually does take a lot of time and is a unique thing. Champaign County is one of the few counties that actually prepares written Zoning Board of Appeals minutes and this is a significant workload. Uh, but given how um, interested our public is in our zoning cases, I think that written minutes uh, are an important component. Uh, of course, that's up to the county board. Mr. Mosher. You can get happy with its enforcement. We had a guy here 15 years ago. If he got in a car and went out, I'd get a complaint when I was a board chairman because he's out shoving somebody around. And we fired him because of the, the complaints we got from the public about this guy's on a terror against certain people. And there's a certain amount of junkers in this county that can clean up a mess and you can make them clean it up and the next day they're back hauling that stuff right back in there again. And I can name names and I know where every one of them lives and you can go look and there's still junk there and there will be, if you haul it away tomorrow, it'll be there again the next day. It's a, it's a fine line to walk between doing what you probably ought to do, but when you get somebody that's over aggressive, then you really got trouble. If you board members want their phone to ring, hire somebody like the guy we dismissed and it'll ring. Miss Ammons. Um, I just want to ask, um, John, I think that you, staffing wise, you're down one person right now that you're working on. Um, and the other thing is that the reports uh, that we have here, uh, those cases are cases that have been continued for, they, they may be various reasons, is that right? They don't necessarily, because I just didn't reply or we just waiting on a letter, it could be court reasons involved in these as well? Uh, no, the, the backlog does not reflect any pending litigation. Any pending litigation. When we refer a case to the state's attorney, in our case, in, in, for our workload, that's all we can do, and it's considered resolved at that point. And so these would be pending just because of, of staffing to get to all of the cases. That's what this is pending about. Mr. McGinty. I'm not going to tell John how to do his job because I don't know how to do his job. But when I have questions, I go to John and I ask him. Um, there is a strategic planning process going on right now that involves several initiatives related to the area of planning and zoning that board members might find interesting and I encourage you to uh, review documents that come out of that committee so that you can have input on uh, what happens this from this point forward with what the board desires 
in terms of being able to set expectations for someone like John in his department. Also, you know, Chris and I were talking, and maybe we can do an analysis about a return on investment similar to what we did with Harrison Harris to see if we can bring in somebody else to help with some of our staffing shortages. Because if we can get some money back out of this by hiring somebody to come in and just hammer through enforcement cases, bring in an outside uh, source, maybe that's a bad idea. But maybe there's a Harrison Harris similar out there that uh, that could help with something like that. So those are just a couple of thoughts. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Ammons. I want to support Mr. McGinty's suggestion. I can't hear you. I, I did want to support Mr. McGinty's suggestion about the strategic planning process. Um, I, I did read the uh, comments suggested from the strategic planning that we did send out. We do meet again tomorrow. It's important that we get comments of what you'd like to see happen as opposed to this is stupid or comments that really don't help us plan. Should I suggest that for the chair, Mr. McGinty, to really consider those uh, in relationship to planning and zoning? Thank you. Any other discussion? Mr. Nudo. Uh, Mr. Weibel and I have looked at a state statute that allows for uh, avoiding the use of the state's attorney for these kinds of cases, having a three-member panel that would be in place of that to take the pressure off of the state's attorney's office and uh, quicker adjudications and more fines and fees collected. So that's something I think as a part of this whole process we ought to discuss and, and see if we can uh, assist in getting more complaints handled and, and uh, process speeded up. <clears throat> Any further discussion? I'd like to place these uh, reports on file. Uh, Mr. Langenheim, Mr. Carter, second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Okay. Uh, item C, Regional Planning Commission. Request to approve the Consolidated Vehicle Procurement Application for Rural Public Transportation Startup Vehicles. Uh, may I have a motion? So moved. Well, Mr. Betts, Ms. Anderson, uh, discussion. Uh, we have the representative from Rural Transportation here. If you want to step up and take any questions at this point, uh, and we're open for discussion. Any discussion? <laughs> See, Ms. Petrie. Um, this is sort of an exploratory question based on a, a recent study that I uh, read about providing and supporting mobility for seniors. Mm -hmm. And within that study, there was a very interesting program that's being uh, done in other parts of the United States to provide uh, means of transportation for seniors in rural areas. Specifically, it is structured so that instead of involving so much expenditure in staff and um, transportation equipment, such as the fancy vans that are in this, uh, these documents, uh, it's a very simplified program where they just directly reimburse people who provide transportation for the elderly to wherever they need to go, medical, groceries, whatever. Um, has this ever been explored to be part of this means of providing transportation for the elderly in the rural area? Um, since it would certainly be um, more economically efficient for one and second take much less logistics to line things up and third have transportation efficiency associated with it. That, that's, I have heard that study, I'm familiar with it, and I do find it interesting that this is, this particular program is, does not allow that type of a expenditure process. However, there is, there is a very similar program in the state of Illinois, and it's the Medicare reimbursement program. And so if, if, for example, someone in this room needed to take um, a family member to the doctor and they qualified under the Medicare 
world, they they personally could be reimbursed per mile for that. And um, that is available to all Illinois residents at this time. It's very lowly, lowly publicized, and um, but it's available. Ms. Petrie. Um, okay, then my next question, uh, especially since I sit on this task force of rural transportation, is uh, what means can be used to uh, raise the level of awareness of this program? I, I understand your explanation that such a program uh, does not fall within the parameters of the grant, mm -hmm. but it seems to be... Uh, another means to help the elderly in the rural area. It sure does. Yeah, yeah it, it, it really is unfortunate, and we do share that information with a lot of people that call in that don't specifically fit into into the transportation program for one reason or another, boundaries they live in, or um, and perhaps it's something that we could take to the HSTP regional committee that you're part of, and Eileen leads to create an awareness for that because it would be helpful. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Mr. James. Well, we in caucus were discussing this for the vehicles, and I was trying to explain to the group that my thought on it was that we've been using some of the buses from uh, Danville, mm -hmm. and these buses would more or less replace those buses so that we would have our own. But also, I think I was telling the group that uh, ridership is picking up some, and the word is getting out a little bit more. Correct? Yes, sir. It, I Actually, I would have predicted just based on comparison to other communities, other counties, and startups that we would be somewhere around 200 rides a month at this time, which is a, which is a slow pace, but we're um, four times that amount. We're at 800, and we're rather floored. We didn't allocate as many vehicles for Champaign County as we needed, so we've reallocated more vehicles from Vermillion over to Champaign so that we could meet, meet the need. And I, you know, there's so much information to share, and sometimes it's overload because of the working relationship you have with MTD, which you explained to the advisory group. But uh, Mr. Nudo had asked me some questions, and I said you guys had some flyers that would yes. answer some of that, which you do have. I mean, does and if would it be okay if we just sit at each end of the table and pass them down? I would that, that be appropriate? Some. And then to follow up on Patsy's, if I may, uh, I know the Regional Planning Commission in the past and other groups past. I think the problem with some of that is in the rural areas there's not very many uh, well there isn't any to be honest about it let alone some other areas to where there's any type of transportation that would take the, the, the place of this and then also you have to look at all the liability if you're picking up a senior citizen that slips under your car and you happen to back up over them so there's just a lot of issues that come into play there yes. well I mean it happened I don't know yes, it fell and it can happen mm -hmm. yeah. so I mean and this is where this comes in and they're, they're protected by federal money until next year. Yeah, we, we do carry the insurance for the program for all the vehicles and any damages that occur. Uh, anything further, Mr. Uh, James? Anything further? Any other discussion? Uh, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Other business? Mr. Schroeder. I, I have a question for Mr. Hall. I guess this is appropriate time. I'm just wondering if you could update the board on on how uh, <clears throat> how the planning department's coming with filling the the uh, planner position, and if you're seeking any part time or any kind of help to help with. Um, your day-to-day -day duties while you're, you're, you and your staff that's designated work on the windmills, windmill farm is, that's a current, if you've looked in any, any extra help or anything with that. Uh, I have talked to uh, admin services about the uh, extra help at various times, but it just didn't seem to be worthwhile. We're... Um, um, we received 53 applications for the associate planner position. I've got a short list um, being finalized this week. The intent is to uh, have that finalized by the end of the week and begin telephone calls. Um, I have not sought any temporary help in the meantime because 
in our office, temporary help. Can, can't do much more than answer the phone, frankly. Um, and so, no, I have not sought temporary help. Thanks, Jim. Any other business? All right, Chair's report. I'd, I'd like to report that uh, Mr. Hall, myself, Ms. Chevaria, Mr. Mon Ms. Monty have been working diligently on the agenda for the August 23rd uh, study session. Uh, you will have information in your hands about two weeks prior to the August 23rd study session with uh, comments and suggestions uh, from the RPC and from uh, uh, Mr. Hall, uh, so that you'll be prepared for the August 23rd at this point. We have not received one comment, one suggestion from any of the board members that has been requested uh, concerning this August 23rd study session on the LRMP. Uh, we're still looking for that, but we will have that information out to you uh, on the uh, about two weeks prior to the 23rd. Uh, Mr. Nudo, you have a question? No, I, I spoke with Susan uh, about the issue of one for 40, and uh, it, it's going to be removed from uh, from the plan. Yeah, that, cycle. that's that's absolutely true. Uh, we will have that out to you uh, with those uh, with that information. Mr. O'Connor, did you have a question, sir? I I was just a little bit out of tune with the program, I guess. Alan is the reason I didn't ask any questions. Okay. I don't normally ask questions of something I thought was dead, buried, and the tombstone in place. Okay. Uh, we're, we're exhuming the body. Um, okay. Uh, that's it for, uh, do we have a consent agenda on what? On A? Is that going on consent? We don't need, right? It doesn't have to go to the board. Oh, C1. C1 was not 100%. Okay, we had it. We had some no's on that. Mr. Weibel. Uh, I'd like to move that we enter the executive session pursuant to 5 ILCS 120-2C11 to consider litigation which is probable or imminent against Champaign County. I further move that the following individuals remain present. The county's legal counsel, director of planning and zoning, county administrator, and recording secretary. I was about to make that motion. Second. Second by Mr. Uh, Rosales. Uh, do we need a roll, roll call on that? Yeah. Roll call vote, please. Uh, Alex? Yes. Ammons? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benz? Mm -hmm. Berkson? Yes. Betts? Yes. Carter? Yes. Coart? Yes. Esri? Yes. Holderfield? Yes. James? No. Jay? Yes. Jones? Yes. Kurtz? Yes. Langenheim? Yes. McGinty? Yes. Michaels? Yes, ma'am. Mosier? Yes. Nudo? Yes. O'Connor? No. Petrie? Petrie? No. Petrie? Yes. Yes. Richards? Yes. Rosales? Yes. Schrader? Yes. Weibel? Yes. 